Okay, here we are on Photoshop 2022 using our layers and drawing tools to create our hamburger project. The end of your project should look something like this, where you can individually pull off each layer of your burger. And that is because we are using our layers over here on the right side. Now, to start off, we're going to close this out. I'm going to start off from your main screen here on Photoshop. And in the top left corner, click New File. From the different options you got a lot of different sizes here we're going to do our default photoshop size and i'm going to go ahead and change the background content to transparent and that allows me to upload this final project without having a white square in the background so i'm going to click create and i should have a blank canvas here to work with now there's a couple of settings depending on how your photoshop is set up that you may want to change uh, the first setting here is I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for my paint bucket tool. Now, if you don't have your paint bucket tool, you might have your gradient tool showing. And if you saw, I can click and hold down with my mouse button on this little triangle. It's called a fly out. And underneath each of these tools, there's generally a, several other tools I can select from. So you're going to want to make sure your paint bucket tool is appearing. The second thing I want to do is I'm going to go into my brush tool, which is this one here. Make sure you're not accidentally using the history brush tool, but instead the brush tool. And now when I'm using my brush tool, I can change the color and I can change the size. The first thing I want to try is I want to change my size. Now up here at the top, it's showing me that it is currently at size 10. Uh, I have a nice keyboard shortcut. If you look next to your letter P on your keyboard and use the little bracket tools, bracket kind of looks like a parentheses, but it's a little bigger uh, or it's square rather. And I use the one to the right, it increases my size. And if I use the one to the left, it decreases my size. Now, if you're not seeing a circle appear like mine is on the screen, that might be because your caps lock is turned on. So if I turn on my caps lock, I get just a little target crosshairs I turn it off I get my brush size circle which is important that makes it a lot more useful to use so I'm going to increase my size to about the size of a hamburger then I'm going to go down here and choose what color I want I'm going to use the foreground color scroll along choose the general color and then change my specific within here. So I'm going to take a little bit of work until I see something that I think looks like a hamburger bun color and click OK. Now I'm going to click here and you're going to see the third thing that we need to adjust. When I click, I get a very soft effect, which is cool sometimes, but I don't actually want that. So I'm going to undo this to undo anything on Photoshop. You're going to hit yeah. Control Z and that will undo anything. Then I'm going to go up here to the top where I saw my brush, and this is called the properties bar. And I'm going to click this little triangle. Now, again, I can change the size here instead of using the bracket key shortcut, but I also want to increase my hardness. And that will make it so that when I draw something on here, instead of having those soft edges, I will have a harsh edge. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to call that my bottom bun. Perfect. Now, my next step is I'm going to draw my next layer. That's where I'm going to work with layers over here on the right side. And this is important to have your layers separate from each other. So I'm going to go ahead and rename layer one here by double clicking on it. And I'm just going to call it bottom. Now, if you have a little lock right here that might have it locked, you need to unlock that so that it can allow you to make adjustments. Next thing I'm going to do is use this little button down by the garbage can. Bottom right hand corner looks like a little plus symbol. That's going to give me a new layer that has put itself on top of my bottom layer. I'm going to name this one lettuce. And now you don't have to rename those, but it does help you keep track of what layer is attached to what. And then I'm going to go over here, make sure my paintbrush tool is selected. And I'm going to shrink it down to a smaller, maybe around size let's say 60 or 70. Go over to my colors choose a green that I think looks kind of like lettuce and now I'm going to make sure I'm on my lettuce layer and just draw a generic piece of lettuce. Now I'm enclosing 
the entire lettuce, which means I started here and I need to end there. And what that allows me to do is go over here to the left, select my paint bucket tool, and now I can click inside of here and fill it. And if you have little extra spots that didn't fill, just click on them. And again, that's the paint bucket tool, making sure again, I'm on the lettuce layer. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little more detail to this. So I'm gonna use my brush tool again, make it even smaller. And choose a slightly darker green, and I'm going to add some lettuce veins to this. Uh, depending on your artistic ability, yours may look better than mine. But this just adds a little bit of extra detail to this. All right. Now I'm done with that layer. I can click on my arrow tool up here at the top, and then drag it around. And you can see I can independently drag each layer because they're separate from each other. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. And for this one, I'm going to add a tomato. So I'm just going to short this one to tomato. And for this, I'm going to use my shape tool, which is down here at the bottom. And if I click and hold down that shape tool, you can see all the different ones I have. Uh, access tool, I'm going to use the ellipsis tool. And the ellipsis allows me to draw ovals and circles. I'm going to choose a darker red for my tomato. And I'm going to draw a circle for the size of my tomato. Now, you'll notice if I just drag around, it's an, a, an oval, basically. But if I hit and hold down the shift key, that makes it a perfect circle. So that is a, an important tool to know. So I'm going to click there, have a perfect circle for my tomato. I click off of that and then I'm going to click on my circle again and I want to do a, another inside circle version of this. So go over to my circle. I'm going to choose a smaller or lighter color. Maybe something like this. Click on my circle tool and I'm going to draw another circle inside of this circle. Let's try that again. There we go. Put that about right there, and then I can pick it up and move it to exactly where I want it to go. Now, notice when I do new shapes, it is automatically creating new layers for me. Um, that's just how shapes work. Uh, and then within this tomato, I'm going to go ahead and add some details. Now, again, depending on your artistic ability, um, Yours may look better than mine. I'm going to use my brush tool here. And I want it to be pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this. It allows me to do that. Shrink down my brush tool. And I want to get the same red. So I'm going to go over here, click on the color. And notice I could try and eyeball it and guess the red, or I have this little eyedropper tool that allows me to click on a color and it automatically finds that color. So it's a very valuable tool. Now I'm going to add a little bit of detail to this. I'll shrink it down even smaller and do some seeds in here. Okay, finish up this tomato. Now I'm going to go ahead and do cheese. So I'll use my rectangle tool. And I'm going to pick out some cheese color. And I'm going to just do a piece of cheese. Do something like that. All right, now here's where I can use some other additional tools. And I'm going to actually turn this into Swiss cheese. So I'm going to put some holes in it. So I've clicked on this. Now I'm going to use my selection tool up here at the top. And this, again, has a flyout where I've got a rectangular marquee selection. I've got an elliptical, so I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to choose just a little spot here. And then whatever I uh, have selected with that marquee, I can press the delete key. Oh, looks like we need to rasterize this. So let's go here and deselect this. 
So what rasterizing does is it keeps it from being an actual shape. So this, for example, this shape, control D is how you unselect, by the way. The shape will move around, not because it's a layer, but because it knows that it's a rectangle. So I'm going to get rid of the fact that it's a rectangle and just make it a shape. I'm going to right click on here and do rasterize layer. And you'll notice it gets rid of that little icon down there. And now this will work just the same as anything else I drew, just sort of like how I had my lettuce. So I'm going to go up here, get my circle, press delete. I'm just going to draw a couple of circles, varying sizes, turn this into Swiss cheese. And you can make it look however you want. If you want to get some off the edge, do that as well. Now, keep in mind, I only have this particular shape selected, so that's why it's only deleting the yellow from my cheese. If I accidentally had other layers selected, it would delete the things below it. All right, so there's my Swiss cheese. I want to deselect that, so I'm going to do Control D on my arrow or move tool, and now I can move around my cheese. Now, if you continue working through your different layers, like I said, you can have... Uh, cheeseburger, you can have a burger, you can have lettuce, you can have bacon, you can have pieces of onion, you can have avocado, whatever you want, mushrooms, whatever you want to draw, and then finally finish off with your top layer, right? The last thing you can do with layers over here is notice they're in a particular order. You can draw those, and I'm going to drag this up so I can see them all. Let's say I think it's weird to have my cheese on top of my onions, right? So I'm going to click on my onions and I'm going to drag them up so they're on top. Or I don't want my tomato to be underneath my onions. I want that to be down on the bottom on top of my lettuce so I can move that. And that's how you move around your layers. Now once you have this finalized and completely done, go ahead and spread it out so that you can see all the different layers. Almost kind of spread it like this, like it fell off the table. And then our final step here is to save this. Now I'm going to go to File, Save. And the first time you do this, it will actually automatically do a save as. Now, you may, it may get something like this, right, where it gives you an option to save either on your computer or, or on the Creative Cloud. Uh, if you don't have this option, just save it on your computer. But I'm going to save it to the Creative Cloud. It's going to ask me to name it. I'm going to call it Hamburger. And I'm just going to save. And that way, it saves on the cloud, and I can access that from any computer uh, rather than having to be on this specific computer. All right. Now that has saved itself as a PSDC file, which means it will keep track of all of these layers and all of the different shapes and allow you to move it. But we want to finalize this. We want to make it so that you can turn this in and see it on like your phone or on any other device and you don't have to have Photoshop to see it. So that is where I'm going to do file export and now this is your final final step you're ready to turn this in a file export and we're going to do a quick export as png so we'll convert it into a png file and i'm going to go ahead and put that on my desktop or i could put it inside my h drive so you're saving this to your actual computer probably inside pictures would be your best spot and click save and now that image has been saved. So effectively, you have two versions of this. You have the PSD version and you have the PNG or JPEG version that you can turn in. And that's how you do your hamburger shape working with all of your layers.